Hello maths fans! Continuing the series on disease modelling, today we're looking at another extension of the SIR model to include an incubation time for the disease. Once again we start with the same three variables, S for susceptibles, I for infectives and R for recovered. So our first equation will be dS by dt, the rate of change of the number of susceptibles over time, and this is going to decrease when there is transmission of the disease. So that is minus r, r is the transmission rate, remember, times i times s. Then our second equation, di by dt, this represents the rate of change of our infective population. So if the susceptible population decreases, somebody is moving from susceptible to infective, so this will increase at the same rate but then people who are infected with the disease might recover. And this, we say, happens at a constant rate, A, and it's proportional to the number of infectives. And then finally, our rate of change of the removed population, R, dr by dt, this one is equal to the growth here, because the infectives are moving into the removed part of our population at this rate, A, I. So this is just the same basic SIR model that we've seen before. Now we make the additional assumption that the disease has an incubation period equal to tau. And what this means is that a susceptible that comes into contact with an infective and catches the disease will not actually move to being in the infectious category for a certain period of time which we label tau. So you can think of this as somebody catching the disease from an infectious person, but then taking some amount of time before they themselves display symptoms and therefore become infectious to others. What this means for our model is that our variables i and s, which originally were just functions of time t, will now be functions of time t minus tau. So here we're going to replace the i and s, which were implicitly functions of t, with i of t minus the delay period tau times s of t minus tau. And we're going to do the same in the di by dt equation because this term here, remember, is the contact, the transmission of the disease. But then the final term, the minus a times i, that will just remain as a function of time t. Because we are only assuming there's a delay, there's an incubation period when moving from s to i, which is represented by this term here. The movement from i to r, the recovery of the disease, we are not at this point incorporating a delay period. So this is also just a function of time t. So this is our full set of equations for the SIR model incorporating an incubation time equal to tau. In the context of COVID-19, this incubation period is believed to be around five days. So in the context of the entire pandemic, which is believed to last several months, possibly even over a year, the incubation period is very small. You can actually explore this model for yourself and adjust the incubation period tau using this fantastic online resource courtesy of Mathigon. So what you will see is that as we increase tau away from zero and begin to incorporate the incubation period into our original SIR model, the curves for SI and R begin to shift further and further to the right. They are moving further forwards in time. Now, interestingly, you may notice that the curves have approximately the same shape. So whilst everything is being shifted into the future, it might suggest that the dynamics are fundamentally the same. And this is something that we're now going to investigate. Now, remember, in the context of COVID-19, we mentioned that the incubation period tau is small compared to the timescale of the disease. And this is actually generally true for any disease that we model using this method. So we have a system of equations containing a small parameter, which is suggesting to the mathematically minded among us 
that we want to do a Taylor expansion. We want to make an approximation to try to simplify this pretty complicated looking term into something we can deal with. So what we're going to do is take this RIS term and we're going to expand around T where we're assuming that tau is our small parameter. So doing this, we have R of I T minus tau times S of T minus tau. And we can say that this is approximately equal to R I of T S of T plus R tau I times S derivative plus order tau squared. What we do next is to take our approximation over here and substitute it into our differential equations. Now at first this might not look any simpler than what we started with, but the key thing to remember is that the tau term, which was originally inside our unknown variables, through our Taylor expansion approximation for small tau, we've been able to write it in front of something which we can now try to work out. The next step involves some pretty heavy algebra because what we want to do is take this term, the is prime term, which is in both equations, and try to simplify this into something more manageable. And we do this by using the fact that these equations, this is s prime and this is i prime. So this is a product of the two derivatives and then we can substitute for s prime and i prime and rearrange to get a simplified expression for i s prime. So I'm going to leave out the steps, leave it as an exercise to the viewer, and what you will end up with is the following. i s prime is equal to i s multiplied by r s minus i minus a on the numerator, and then the whole thing is divided by 1 minus r tau i minus s. We call this i s because we have this common factor, and then this complicated expression we just write as f of r a tau i s. So this just shows that it's a function of several variables, several constants and functions which is given by this expression. But writing it like this allows us to substitute it into our full system as follows. So we're going to neglect the order tau squared terms. We're going to remember that we've neglected them, but for now we don't need to write them in our equations anymore. And we're going to substitute the is prime term here for is f. So this is now i s f. And I'm going to leave out all of the things that f is a function of. Again, we're going to just have this expression here to remind us what f represents. So we're going to do the same for the bottom one here as well. So we now get an i s multiplied by our function f. You may also have noticed that I've rubbed off the dr by dt equation because that is now decoupled from the s and i equations. And what that simply means is it was only in terms of i, so if we can solve these two for i and s, then we can solve for r. So we're just going to ignore that equation for now and proceed with these first two. Following what we've done in previous videos, when analyzing these equations, we combine them to get an equation for di by ds. And you do this by taking the di by dt equation and dividing by the ds by dt equation. Again, this might not look like a simplification of the original system of equations, but bear with me. We've got a tau term here and also on the top. And remember, tau is a small parameter and we're ignoring terms of order tau squared. So what we can do with this term on the bottom is another expansion. Now, you may be familiar with the binomial expansion, also sometimes known as the geometric series or even just a standard Taylor expansion. But it says that one plus something where something is small, which is true here for tau 
the incubation period, remember, is approximately equal to 1 minus tau f, so the minus here comes down when you do this expansion, plus order tau squared. So what this means for our expression up here is we can take this term from the denominator, because the power is minus 1, use this expansion, and this gives us something on the numerator. Now, if we do that, we end up with the following. di by ds, we've got our 1 over that, so minus 1 over ris. But now, we've got the numerator, the top, multiplied by this term here, 1 minus tau f. So the 1 will just give us one of these three terms. But now, we've got minus tau f times the three terms. So the first term gives us minus tau f ris. Then we have minus, comes a plus, a tau, a tau i f. And then the last term would give us a tau squared term, multiplying tau f by tau r i s f. But we're neglecting order tau squared. So we just have that plus order tau squared. We're almost there. The very final step is just to look at this expression and try and figure out what's going on. So we have a minus 1 over ris. That's fine. We've got an ris minus ai plus tau risf minus tau risf. So these two now perfectly cancel out. And then we've got a plus a tau i f, and then order tau squared. So what we can write this as, in fact, is di by ds is equal to minus r i s minus a i divided by r i s plus order so this term is a tau, and we also had tau squared. Now this potentially looks like something you've seen before, I hope. So this is the exact same equation up to this point. If we ignore order a tau and order tau squared terms, this equation is the exact same equation that we got for the standard SIR model with no incubation time, or with an incubation time tau of zero. So the big result here is that the dynamics of our model are actually unchanged as long as we can neglect terms of order a tau and tau squared, which is why we saw the same shape to our curves when we plotted them earlier using Mathagon. And what this means in practice is that even when we include the incubation period tau in our SIR model, the actual results, the structure and the behavior of the system will actually be the same as the basic SIR model that I looked at in the very first video. So for a disease like COVID-19, where tau is indeed small, then it's very reasonable to ignore terms of order a tau and tau squared. So this tells us, when trying to model the pandemic and trying to understand the spread of the disease, we can actually simplify our models and we don't need to worry about the incubation period because to leading order, the dynamics will be exactly the same. This means that the mass is exactly the same and so our response is going to be the same thing I've said many times before. You need to wash your hands, stay at home and practice social distancing. Thank you everybody for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel and I'll be back soon with some more maths. Take care.